You find this a strange place, don't you? And you're wondering about a lot of things. Who I am, why I brought you here, and what's going to happen to you. Who I am and why you are here are not important, but... Uh, uh, yes, I'll be glad to tell you what's going to happen to you. You're going to die, both of you. Midnight, the witching hour when the night is darkest, our fears the strongest, and our strength at its lowest ebb. And now, Murder at Midnight, Tales of Mystery and Terror by Radio's Masters of the Macabre. Our story by Robert Newman is The Dark Chamber. Police headquarters. Ryan speaking. Hello, police. Listen, you've got to help me. You've got to. Just a minute. Hold on there. What's your name? My name's Watson, Joe Watson. I'm a driver for the Ajax Sanitary Hand Laundry, and I... Address? Where I am, you mean? I, I don't know. That's part of the trouble. I... Oh, now, look, buddy. Now, wait, listen. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Check the laundry. Check the veterans. I'm an ex-GI. They'll tell you I'm straight. It's... Well, I'm in a room someplace. I, I don't know where it is or how I got here or what I'm here for. I don't even know how long I've been here. It's, it's a big room, but funny. No doors, no windows that I can see. Just a couple of chairs and a table with this phone on it. Walls are gray, rough, like soundproofing, and I'm scared. Well, what do you expect us to do? Find me. Find out what this is all about and get me out of here. Listen, this isn't a gag, can't you tell? You don't know what it's like just sitting here waiting, not knowing where or why or what's going to happen. Can't you trace this call or something? Well, okay. Hang on. Thank the Lord. I was afraid that... Listen, I hear something. Someone's coming. I better hang up. I'll call you back later if I can. How do you do? Who are you? My name's Helmy. Dr. John Helmy. And your name? I don't have to tell you anything. That's very true. Though I didn't think you were aware of it. I think I already know everything about you that I'm interested in knowing. Like what? Name? Joseph Watson. Age? 26. Occupation? Employee of the Ajax Laundry. Honorably discharged from the army six months ago with a bronze star and purple heart. What? So you went through my pockets, huh? Well, if you know that much, you know I haven't got any dough. Money? I'm not interested in money. Well, what do you want, then? Where is this place? The last thing I remember is making a delivery on Spruce Street. Noticing that the lights were out in the hall and hearing a noise behind me. You or somebody slugged me. <laughs> That's right. Well, will you stop grinning like that and tell me what this is all about? Of course. I brought you here because I need your help in an experiment. An experiment whose details I've already worked out with mice, rats, cats, and other animals. What? What kind of an experiment? An experiment in fear. Fear? Yes. You fought in the war and you were wounded. That means you've probably known fear. And still, you won the Bronze Star. That means you overcame it. The question is, can you overcome your present fears? What are you talking about? You think I have to take your blood pressure, calculate your skin tension and adrenal discharge to tell that you're afraid? Nothing has happened to you yet. Absolutely nothing. And yet you are afraid, aren't you? You're afraid because you're face to face with the unknown. Because you don't know what I want, what I'm planning to do. That is as it should be. And that is the way we will leave it for the moment. Now, wait a minute. Come back here. Come back. You can't. Hello, operator. Get me the police. Hello, please. This is Joe Watson again. Listen, I got a little more dope. I don't know if it'll help, but there was a guy in here just now. Said his name was he Helming. John Helming. That's probably a phony. He's about 50, tall, over six foot, white hair and gray eyes. No, I still don't know what it's all about. Have you been able to trace this number yet? How long will it take? Okay, I'll hang on, but... The lights just went out. The room's pitch dark and someone's coming in again. I better stop. But please, hurry. Who's that? Who just came in? Who, who are you? A girl. Keep away from me. Keep away, do you hear? Keep away. What's the angle now? Angle? 
Why did you bring me here? Wait a minute. You mean he put the snatch on you, too? When I was on my way home. Chloroform or something. And the next thing I knew... Why are you pretending? You're in on it, too. You must be. It's a trap. It's a trap, all right. But I'm not in on it. I'm in it. Along with you. My name's Watson. Joe Watson. I'm Betty Grant. You... You swear? I swear. What would I lie about it for? I don't know. I don't know anything, but... No, I... I don't think you're lying. Two of us now. I wonder why he put you in here, put us together. Who is he? What's he going to do? I don't know. He said something about an experiment, an experiment in fear, but... Listen, we got to get out of here. Somehow, some way. Shh. He may be listening. <laughs> Very astute, my dear. Of course I'm listening. But where are you? Right here. I've been here all the time. Who are you? No, Joe, don't. He must want you to go for him. He's probably got a gun. Right again, my dear. Not that I'll need it. This is stage two of the experiment. A new stimulus to action has been introduced. Man against the unknown has become man and woman against the unknown. Look, let's get down to brass tacks. Be sensible about this. Certainly, Joe. That's why I won't need my gun. This new stimulus has been negated by an increased sense of responsibility. Responsibility towards the girl. And therefore, by increased fear. Why, you... Gun or no gun, if I can get my hands on you... Where are you? Where are you? Outside now, so you can relax. That was the final stimulus in this stage. Injured pride. The discovery that I could read your inmost thoughts. Knew exactly what you were going to do. But you mustn't let that bother you. I already know everything you're going to do. From now on, till the end. Listen, you. Tell me. Tell me! Joe. I know. Hold on, baby. Don't let her get you. Must be a way, some way. Do you suppose he's still listening? Hard to say. But I'm going to take a chance. There's one thing he didn't figure on. The telephone. Here? Yeah. If I can find it again in the dark. It was... Oh, here. Here it is. I put through two calls already to the police. Told them what was happening and asked them to get me out of here. I had to hang on both times before they could trace the call to get this number. This time, I'm going to... Hello, hello. What? Operator. Oh, this isn't the operator. You're on a busy wire. It doesn't matter. Thank heavens I got somebody. I've been trying for about ten minutes. Look, get off the line, will you? I've got to get through to the police. It's terribly important. But you've got to help me. You've got to. My name is Ben Missouri. I'm a prisoner someplace. I don't know where. Well, what? It's true. A strange house somewhere. A doctor who says his name is Helmy. <laughs> What are you laughing at? What is it, Joe? What is it? I haven't got any clues. Hello, hello? I've got a guy named... I'm sorry, Ben. It's no use. What do you mean? We're in the same boat you are. A girl named Betty Grant and myself. Helmy's got us locked up, too. Locked up? Yeah. Said he knew everything we were thinking, everything we were going to do. I did get through to the police before, but I guess he caught wise. We're talking to each other over an inside line. Yeah, we're through. Don't say that, Joe. Don't even think it. Look, ask him exactly where he is. Just where are you, Ben? Do you know? Hard to say. I was out cold when he brought me here. It's a kind of a hall or passageway. Cement floor, ceiling. Stone walls. There doesn't seem to be any door or open or anything like that. That's what I thought here, too, but there must be one. Well, how would he have gotten you in there? Listen, start looking. See if you can find it. Okay. Then if the three of us can get together, we ought to be able to figure something out. Hold on. I'll start pounding on the walls. You see if you hear anything. Go ahead. What's he doing? I'm going to knock on the walls to see if he's anywhere near us. If he is, if he can find a door and we can get together. You hear anything? I'm not sure. Maybe. I'm not sure either. It sounds awful far away as if... There, listen. That wall right there. Hello. Hello, Ben. Yes? We heard you. You're right next to us. Now you listen and Betty will knock back. Go ahead, Betty. That way you'll be able to tell just which wall it is. Okay. All right. He's got it. He's going to see if there's a door. There must be one in Boston. Ben. Ben. Hello. What is it, Joe? I don't know. I thought I heard something. A, a yell and then... Joe, look. There is a door there. It's opening and... <gasps> you. Dr. Helm. Why, yes. Were you expecting someone else? An experiment in fear. Yes, I think someone else was expected. And still is. 
but not for a little while yet. Not until the clock strikes 12 for... Murder! At midnight! <laughs> Just a moment later now, standing in the darkness of the strange room, two frightened young people stare at the tall figure of the doctor, silhouetted against the dim light from outside. They catch a fleeting glimpse of a long corridor and of something lying on the floor. Then Helming steps into the room, shutting the door behind them. I asked whether you were expecting someone else. Then, then it was just a trick. It was you on the phone all the time. No. Don't you think I'd know his voice? Where is he? Our friend, Mr. Lazari. Right outside. What'd you do to him, Anthony? What'd you do to him? Don't you know? Sure I know. You killed him. You... Did you kill him? Quite a state you've gotten yourself into. Why? Is it because you finally tried to do something about your predicament and failed? Because getting together with Lazari would have been a kind of victory, indicating there was a chance of escaping... Or is it because you weren't sure whether I would kill or not? And because you still don't know? You're mad. Really mad. I wasn't sure before, but I am now. You're just not normal. Really? And just what does being normal mean? Doesn't it depend on geography, other factors? In Nazi Germany under Hitler, wasn't it the norm to hate, despise democracy, believe in violence, lies and murder? It sure was. But this isn't Germany. True. And also true that by American standards, you are normal and I am not. And it's because you are normal, with normal reactions and inhibitions, that I brought you here for study. But you will be interested to know you have not done, nor will do, one thing that I did not foresee. Every move you made, every emotion you felt, was charted, outlined, and... What's that? That, I think, is probably the police. Police? Yes. I know that you're very anxious to talk to them, and, well, I'll see that you get a chance to soon. Good evening, officer. I'm looking for a guy named Helming. Dr. Helming. Oh, I'm Dr. Helming. Uh, come in, won't you? Okay, thanks. This is, well, a kind of a funny business. It's about a phone call we got a while ago. Finally traced here. From a guy who said he was a prisoner or something. And uh, that, that must have been Watson. Well, yeah, that was his name, Joe Watson. You know him? Of course. I can't tell you how sorry I am. It, it was really very careless. I'll be in, I'll see that it doesn't happen again. What do you mean? Well, if you did any investigating, which I'm sure you did... Then you know that I, well, I don't run a sanitarium exactly, but I do take a few patients of uh, mental cases uh, for treatment. Oh, so that's it. A uh, nut, huh? Oh, I, I wish you wouldn't say that. The war years have been a great strain on all of us. And there were those who just couldn't take it. Watson, for instance, and my other patient, uh, Betty Grant. Two of them, huh? What's their trouble? Well, Watson's case is particularly interesting. A 4F who wasn't able to enlist. He developed a sense of guilt which became too much for him, turned into a persecution mania. Thinks that everyone is down on him, huh? Well, not everyone exactly. His present fantasy is that he's an ex-GI and that I'm keeping him prisoner. You see, since he wasn't able to fight in the war, he's cast me in the role of the enemy and he's fighting against me. Any hope for him? Definitely. Miss Grant's problems, however, are more complex. But the interesting thing is that when she's with him, she takes over his delusion and shares it with him. Oh, sure sounds plenty tough. Well, I guess I'll run along. I I'm sorry I bothered you. Well, don't you want to see them, First Officer, and talk to them? Oh, there's no need of that, Doctor. We get calls from cranks every day. We always investigate, of course. But, but I insist. After all, you, you only have uh, my word for it. However, there's... Uh, well, there is just one thing I'd like to caution you about. I, I know. You want me to play along with them. Right. Oh, don't worry. I'll humor them. Oh, splendid. Oh, right in here. Oh, quite a room. Uh, air conditioned. Uh, much better than having windows with bars on them. Joe, look. It, it is a cop. And that means that... 
And you did get my message. Sure, Joe. Took a little time to trace the call, but uh, everything is okay now. Oh, thank heaven. Such a screwy story. I was afraid that... Wait a minute. Why is he standing there like that? Why haven't you got the bracelets on him? Dr. Helming? Oh, no need for any rough stuff. He said he'd come along quietly. What? But you... You're lying. I don't know why, but there's something wrong here. You think we made the whole thing up that we're crazy. Oh, now, now, now. It's true. He told you we were and you believed him. Good Lord, haven't you got eyes in your head? Would two of us be crazy in just the same way? Well, of course not, and I'm telling Stop you... Stop it, will you? Stop talking like that. If I could only prove it to you somehow, I'll show you. I know. Lazari. Joe. Murder. That'll open your eyes. Somewhere in that wall there, a door. Make it, make him open it. Show you what's behind it. I think maybe I'd better be going, Doc. But there is a door, officer. Uh, just a second, and I'll open it for you. Uh, here we are. Joe, the body, it, it's gone. <laughs> These doctors, they're always hiding the bodies. If it turns up again later, give us another ring. <laughs> here, uh, can I go out this way, Doc? Uh, down to the end of the corridor, then uh, to your right. I'm sorry I gave you all this trouble. Well, perfectly all right, and uh, thank you for being so understanding. Goodbye. So long. Well, children? Don't look that way, Joe. Don't. I know what you're thinking, and it's not true. We're not crazy. There was a body there. Of course. You hid it when you went out to let the cop in. And the telephone, you left that there purposely. You wanted me to use it to get the police here. Obviously. I told you that this was to be an experiment in fear. What I didn't tell you was that, in a sense, I was one of the subjects, too. It was important for me to learn how I would function under pressure. And speaking objectively, I think I did rather well, don't you? But why? Why are you doing all this? What are you after? Well, there's no reason why I shouldn't tell you. If anyone truly understands the nature of fear, is able accurately to forecast the actions and reactions of an individual, then he can use fear as a weapon. For society will react as the individual reacts. You see, society doesn't want to believe that anything can menace it. Doesn't want to take action to protect itself any more than the individual does. This was something that Hitler and Mussolini understood intuitively. I understand it scientifically. They failed, but I shall succeed. You... You mean that you... I'm afraid that's all I have time for. As far as you two are concerned, the experiment is finished. Completely finished. I have a few arrangements to take care of, and then, well, make the most of these last few minutes, for they will be your last. Joe. Joe, do you hear anything? Is he coming back? Not yet. He, he's going to kill us, isn't he? Just the way he killed Lazari. He's going to try to. Why are you sitting there like that, looking at me? Hmm? I guess because it's the first chance I've had to look at you. How do you mean? Well, when he first put you in here, it was all dark. And so many things happened after that. It's funny. What is? The things that you can tell about a person even in the dark. I kind of thought you were little. I knew you were awful nice and had a lot of nerve, but I didn't think you'd be so pretty. I'm not so pretty, Joe. And I'm not very brave, either. I'm, I'm scared. I'm awful scared. I don't want to die. Don't worry about it, baby. Don't think about it. But just sitting here like this, waiting, there's nothing we can do. Every time we did try to do something, it was something he knew about, was expecting us to do it. Please, baby. Joe, something's happened to you. You were scared before, too. But now... This... Well, this is going to sound kind of funny, especially now, but... Well, do you have anyone special? Uh, a fella, I mean, that... that... Why, why, no, Joe. At least, not exactly. Well, that's swell. I, I mean, well, gee, it's a shame we never met before. If we had, we wouldn't be here now. I, I mean... Well, we probably would have been out together someplace and... Say, what time do you get through work usually? About six. The store closes at 5.30, but... Me too. I could have picked you up about six and... Joe, uh... you still haven't told me what you're going to do. What's the difference? Just as long as somebody does something. But... Joe, I hear something. He's coming. Yeah. Okay, get up. 
Open that corner of the room so they see you, see you as soon as he opens the door. But, but what about you? What? I'll be waiting over here, behind the door. But Joe... I know I haven't got much of a chance, but I wish me luck. Joe, no, please, you... All right, my young friends, time. All my arrangements have been completed, and... Where's Watson? Right here. What are you doing? What? Joe, look Give how he's... that... It's okay, baby. He didn't get me. I had the barrel of the gun and... Good Lord, it got him in the chest. But you couldn't have done that. You couldn't have. Outside, Betty. See if you can find another phone. All right. Call the police again. And this time, tell them to bring an ambulance. All right. But you... You couldn't have done it, I tell you. It was all plotted. Craft. Worked out in detail. I knew just what you were going to do. How you would react. By this time... You want to be in a state of complete frustration, resigned, ready to die. Why did you do it? Why? I don't know. Now, now, just take it easy and end. But I've got to know. You've got to tell me. Was it because of the girl? Out of desperation? Because you knew you were to die anyway? I tell you, I don't know. I just know that, well, uh, a guy will take just so much pushing around. Lying there, Dr. Helming stares uncomprehendingly at the young man who bends over him. Then suddenly, a look of fear comes over his face. And even as he tries to draw away, his eyes glaze. And he, too, passes into a dark chamber. A haunted room which has no exit. As the clock strikes twelve for... Murder! At midnight. Remember to be with us again when a door that is no door opens and the clocks strike twelve for murder at midnight. Joe Watson was played by Bill Quinn. Dr. Helming was Harold Young. With music by Charles Paul, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leader. 